what the hell does find the fabulous mean? Well, that all ties into a decade-long effort to get me published, but we will get into that in a little more detail over the course of this video. Hello there, this is Andrew, and it occurred to me, uh, having seen, especially having seen how many people refer to me as the fabulous or find the fabulous, that it might be a good time now that I have a couple of followers to talk just a little bit about myself, and what better way to start than with the weird-ass name for my channel? So, first of all, I am not the fabulous. Sam Scarborough is the fabulous. Uh, in terms of who that is, we'll get into that. But first, I want to go just a little bit into my background here, uh, which has to do with what this channel used to be before I turned it into uh, one dedicated to indie video games. I, before this, before I started writing about the video games and such, I was a fiction writer, uh, mostly spec fic, a lot of science fiction. I started off doing novels. My first novel was in 2012 or 13. I ended up writing 12 of them, none of which ever got published. Uh, in 2017, I started doing short stories in an attempt to promote those. I did, I eventually lost track, but it was somewhere in the ballpark of 80 to 100, maybe a little more, and some of those got published. Uh, the most notable was, uh, in of all places, Nature Magazine. Nature Magazine, very notable, uh, obviously scientific journal, has a small fiction section in the back. It's called Nature Futures, and if you look it up, uh, I had a piece published. It was called Starless Night. That was probably my most notable publication success. Uh, I had a few others, a few anthologies here and there, but by and large, it didn't go anywhere, and I formally quit even attempting to seek publication for fiction in 2023. I think the last novel I wrote was in 2022. It's called The Remnant Pieces. You can find it online if you want to look for it. That one's not science fiction. Now, The Fabulist was my fourth novel. And this one, I'm going to, I have an article I'm going to be consulting for notes on this because the dates kind of start to blur together after a while. But the Fabulous, the very first version of this, because there's more than one version of this novel, dates back to 2014. And initially, I was writing it as a serial, serialized fiction, on a now defunct website called Juke Pop Serials. Pretty cool little place, uh, paid me a remarkable amount for this thing. Uh, so that worked out okay. I actually had a lot of really good feedback on it. And in terms of what the story is, uh, the Fabulous is post-apocalyptic fiction about the world's last artist. And this, the main character is, does not have a name. Well, he does. It's Sam Scarborough, but you don't know that at the beginning. Minor spoiler. Uh, but he's initially referred to simply as the storyteller. A few characters do call him the Fabulous. Now, what that means is Fabulous is a term with a double meaning. Uh, literal definition of a fabulist is a person who writes fables, but it can be used colloquially to refer to a person who is a crazy liar. And yes, there may be a reason why it is I picked a name like this for the story. As I said, there were a few different versions of this. I combined it at a certain point with a different story I was writing. The two of them were kind of related. And that was a different version of The Fabulous, which, by the way, you can read for free. I'll have a link to where you can download that. By the way, that final version of The Fabulous is a Creative Commons, and it is under an open culture license, which means you can do pretty much whatever the hell you want to with this thing, and it won't bother me as long as you attach my name to it in some way. Uh, if you want to go out and try to make money with this thing, go for it. I don't think it's going to work out for you, but if you want to try, uh, take a shot. You know, I'm not one of these kids who thinks that everybody's trying to steal their, like, novelized D&D &D campaign. I want you to steal my novel. It helps me. Anyway, in 2015, I did what a lot of people did, and they tried to, I tried to self-publish it. Which, you know, disruptive force, overthrowing the uh, published industry, blah de blah de blah it's all nonsense. Uh, you're going to discover over the course of this, I'm really not a fan of the rah-rah stuff. 
of the don't give up of the cheerleading stuff, no matter what context it's done in. But by this point, I was really, really getting sick of dealing with uh, literary agents. Eventually, the different versions of this, and I think the most recent one was a rewrite I did in 2018, maybe 2019. All of them together were rejected a total of 250 times, and I hate to say that, this is not the most rejected manuscript I ever sent out. I, I just want to say this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, uh, having dealt with uh, people in video games and people in fiction, uh, video game developers, publishers, people at kind of the periphery of the industry that I deal with, so much nicer than anyone, anyone I dealt with in literature. I mean, these literary types are absolute scumbags, just total narcissistic monsters. And it, it improved my life so much when I no longer had to kiss their asses, you don't even know. But here's the downside to that. When you stop kissing ass, you have to sell the book yourself. You know, there's this myth that, oh, self-publishing, anybody can just put their book online and it'll be a bestseller. That is not how it works. That is not how it works. It is not 2009. We know how this comes out. If you are not famous already, uh, you need to find a really specific niche. And if you aren't writing in that really specific niche, then you have to find some way to get attention. And 2015, I was looking around for ways to do that, and I settled on a website called Book Crossing. Now, Book Crossing, I actually checked it just before I started recording this. It still exists. The website is still there, but it is so different than it used to be. The original idea behind this was you would leave a book just somewhere out in public, like on a park bench or wherever, just out and about, like in a cafe, wherever, where people could find it and you would write a code in it, and someone would find it, uh, the code, and you'd have, like, the URL. They'd go over, they would input the code, and they would register the book where they found it, and maybe leave a little comment, and then when they're done with it, they leave it somewhere else for someone else to find it, and if you go to the site, you can kind of track the book as it moves around. And I thought, well, that's really cool, because... Part of uh, the fabulous, the story, is the main character is, is an itinerant storyteller. He's wandering around. So I thought it would be kind of neat if I had a copy of the book that traveled around and kind of got its own stories. And at the time, I was living in Lawrence, Kansas, kind of an you know, arty, indie community. So I figured, perfect. This is a great way to kind of get the community to notice what I'm doing. So I had I actually had a special copy of this printed up. It had, uh, I referred to it as the Traveler's Edition. It had some notes in the front kind of explaining what I was doing, uh, explaining about the book crossing concept. It had a QR code. I should mention the book crossing site, way out of date, way, way, way out of date. Doesn't have anything like this, doesn't have support for anything like this. But I had an explanation, I had, I had links, and then I even threw in a few extra pages because I was encouraging people to write messages in it and put stickers on it and things like that. And the idea was I would leave that and it would circulate around the community for a while. And eventually I would get it back and I'd write like a blog post. And I'd take pictures of it and sort of talk about what experiences the book had while it was traveling around the community. And by the way, I figured this book would not travel much past Lawrence, Kansas. I figured it might travel around like the greater Kansas City area, Casey, Lawrence, Topeka. At most, it might go a state away to, like, Missouri or Colorado, maybe. That was what I was thinking. Uh, it turned out a little bit different, but we'll get back to that. So I waited until uh, Final Friday Art Walk, and I left it a copy of it outside this, like, photography studio where I know there a lot of people would be gathered. And I ended up having to actually move it around a time or two because no one was finding it. But eventually... I came back the next day. It had been picked up. Now, it was never registered on the Book Crossing site, which is not a surprise. The Book Crossing site is a pain in the ass. Uh, nobody wants to register for it. Uh, that's one of the problems. That's why these days it's not really used for the purpose I just explained. It's used mostly as sort of an informal book lending club. If you're trying to get your hands on a recent uh, best-selling novel, you can see if anyone in your community is circulating it. That's what it is these days. Not really... The, the thing, even honestly, when I was doing this almost 10 years ago, that's what it was back then, too. So it didn't, never got registered. However, 
uh, I thought ahead and I also had a Facebook page for it, which I probably should have used instead of the book crossing site, but that's a lesson I hadn't learned yet. And eventually two people uh, put their name, kind of signed up for the Facebook page. And the only way you'd know about this is if you found the book. So these are the people who found the book. Now, the first one was a student at the University of Kansas who was an international student from Brazil. And the second person was, I assume, a friend of his in Brazil. So this book that I always kind of assumed would stay, you know, maybe travel at most a few hundred miles away, uh, went to another continent. As far as I can tell, this book is in Brazil. Now, a couple years ago, by this point it had been circulating for quite a while, I wrote just a, a little article that I was doing the medium thing and the vocal thing at the time. And I wrote a little article that was called, Have You Found the Fabulist? And it was just an explanation for kind of all the things I've just described. I'll go ahead and link to that one too. Uh, the medium version's a little bit mangled, but you should be able to get the hint from it. Uh, just seeing if by chance, by chance, some cosmic chance, someone knew where the book was. I know that seems unlikely, but weird things have happened. Really unlikely things have happened in life. I thought maybe that would get uh, to someone who had seen the book or had talked to a person who'd seen it, and maybe, maybe against all odds, I would see this thing again. Keep in mind, it's a decade later. I haven't seen it. Uh, one obstacle to that is uh, the book is in Brazil, and I've spent most of that time uh, in mainland East Asia, so it would have had to cross an ocean to get to me. But never mind that. I never heard back about it, but in the meantime, I was trying to promote, I was still under the delusion that maybe I could get a book to stick. By the way, I did not, my, uh, I, I actually did worse with time. Uh, the Fabulist had a response rate from, a, or a request rate, rather, from agents of about 3%. The most successful novel, the most successful quote-unquote novel I ever did, the most successful manuscript, was uh, one called Nerd World that had 6%. Mainly, I think, because I marketed it as young adult, and, you know, that's kind of a trending market right now. Uh, just so you know, that sucks. The number you hear cited for, like, a book that's likely to actually get published is 10%. And honestly, the people I hear of who get, get to market, it's way higher than that. It's 25 30%. So clearly, uh, no one in the liter literary industry thinks I have it. No one thinks I have the chops for this. But it got worse because the last couple of novels I wrote had a 0% request rate. Nothing. No one was asking for it at all. One of them I sent out 330 times. <laughs> Didn't get a single request. Fun fact, by the way, uh, that particular novel, the one that was rejected 330 times, the most recent rejection was a few days ago. It was a rejection for a query I sent out in October of 2022 which means this lady got back to me after 20 months. I, I, I don't know what the point is. It kind of feels like a slap in the face after this long. You know, to recap, people in video games, way nicer than people in fiction. Way nicer than people in fiction. But uh, while I was working on this, I kind of anticipated this was not going to work out. And I created a YouTube channel that... For the most part, it started off being dramatic readings of my own work, which, as you imagine, didn't go anywhere. I also, for a while, had a podcast where I was describing... I wanted to give a more realistic perspective of what it's like to actually submit a novel, what it's like to shop a manuscript around. And I had this whole strategy worked out that completely failed because I had zero success, like less success than I'd ever had in my life. Uh, so all the videos are on there. They're hidden. They're still there. I don't know why anyone would ever want to see them, but, you know, I don't know if a lot of people request to see me slowly lose my shit as I get rejected by the entire planet. I guess I could make them visible again. Anyway, though, uh, I had the name Find the Fabulous. That's the name I used for my, my author site back in the day, and most people would just use their names, but my name is not super rare fun fact at one point um there was another person with my exact name in china while i was there which is nuts but it's how things worked out 
So I ended up just keeping, I kind of just kept renewing it because I liked the sound of it. And I had some logos and some iconography and I just rolled with it. Doesn't make as much sense for a video game thing, but honestly, I look around YouTube and no one's channel name makes a lot of sense. So I figured, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll be fine the fabulous. And that is the long, rambling, and somewhat pathetic story of how my channel got its name. I might be convinced to do more videos about myself. I uh, kind of did enough of that on Medium a couple years back for one lifetime. But, you know, I could be talked into it. Anything to convince you people that I'm not a robot. I've had people accuse me of being a robot, which is funny because you can hear me breathing. And, of course, if you have found the fabulous, please get in touch with me. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't know. Um... Like I said, very unlikely things have happened. Very unlikely things have happened to me. Things that seem like they were million to one shots. So, I don't know. Maybe one of you has seen a copy of it. Uh, you've seen images of what the cover looks like throughout this. So, maybe you've seen that. Maybe you've seen it sitting on someone's shelf. Uh, disused, covered in dust, neglected. I don't know. Not aware of having much of a Brazilian audience. But maybe it's not in Brazil anymore. Maybe it's somewhere else. I don't know. This has been a weird journey. And this is as much of it I care to talk about uh, today. So thank you very much, and I will see you later.